Hello, everyone. I see we've got a few more people joining. I'm going to go ahead and get started here and welcome everyone uh, to our first installment of Workshop Wednesday. I'm going to be your host today. Uh, my name is Amanda Norton, and I'm the A&D Regional Advisor for National Office Furniture on the West Coast. Um, and you're logged in to a sketching workshop, um, Blurred Lines. So that's what we've got on tap today. Um, we do have a guest host that's going to guide us through the workshop. Um, I'm going to do a little introduction here before I hand it over to Doug. Here we go. So Doug Whitneybell, he is our guest host today. And Doug is an architect, designer, illustrator, and artist based in California. He's also known as the designer that cannot stop drawing. Drawing is a basis for many creative acts. Doug is known for teaching young students about the magic of sketching and drawing. The more you draw, the more you can decipher the hidden depths of the creative process, he says. The process of group and individual sketching becomes a spark for igniting new possibilities. He's an engaged member of the architecture and design community in the San Francisco Bay Area, and his creative talents extend beyond the design studio to his digital and hand illustrations. And those can be seen in EDC Magazine, Gensler On, and his own blog spot, drawingontheworld.com. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen. We're going to spotlight Doug here. Doug, um, yes. I, I've got my sketch pad ready. <laughs> it's blank, okay. you're, but you're I've got great. it ready. Um, I, I do want to say that everyone, I'm going to be watching the chat and um, the Q&A as we go along. So if you have any questions, feel free to chat those in and we'll answer them as we go along. All right, oh, are you ready? Okay, am, am, I, am I showing now on the screen? You are. I see okay. you. Okay. And my voice is okay. Everything audio is going. I hear you. We're good. Okay. Great. Let's, um, let me just add a couple more little footnotes to the description that, um, was just given about me. Um, yes, I'm based in California, but well, I'm originally from New Orleans, grew up in New Orleans and I went to Tulane University, master's degree in architecture, and then also got a degree in fine arts, uh, painting. So, it's always been, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, a mixture of, of the fine arts and say the architectural arts or the architectural design. And I keep going back and forth. Um, but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the idea of drawing and sketching. And I put together a show today uh, to give you an idea of what it's all about to start. And it's really more of a, a sampling of what drawing is all about. And as was mentioned, um, if you do have a sketchbook, what we're going to do at the end is we are going to do a little exercise. And um, I've got that exercise outlined behind us here, but don't, don't be worried about that. It's not going to be hard. And, and I, you know, if you get scared, you don't even have to participate. But I am going to encourage you to participate. And so why don't we let me go directly into a, a show here that I want to pull up. And I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. I want to make sure that sharing the screen it says host has disabled attendee screen sharing can you help on that one hello oh now it says i am the host now let's see there you go all right you should have privilege do you have that all right perfect okay right. let's let's try that mm -hmm. All right, so let me just make sure that we've got the screen showing. Is is that showing up right now? I still see you. Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. Desktop one, share screen. Uh, desktop one. There we go. Now we go. Okay. Good. Is it working? Doing it okay. Is. All right. Great. Um, I'm going to start off with a little quote by <clears throat> some of you probably know David Hockney. Essentially, he's, he said drawing should be part of all visual education in the same way that push-ups, or actually he said press-ups, but push-ups are part of an athlete's training. 
And I'm a big believer in that. And in fact, um, that idea that I'm a designer who can't stop drawing, I do draw every day. So it's basically like a, an exercise that I do on a everyday basis. Um, I'll give you an outline of what drawing from my big philosophy or big worldview philosophy is all about. It's, it, it is essentially about listening and looking, seeing the scene and allowing yourself to both analyze and visualize and in many cases, synthesize the information that you see in front of you. There are down below here, Michael Graves, the architect, came up with the description of three different types of drawings. The first one is a referential drawing, which is more the idea sketch, the, the, the thing that's mainly drawing what you see, like a visual diary. The second type of drawing is a preparatory drawing, more like a study sketch. It could be layered, and many people call those design studies. And then the third one is more of the definitive drawing, the finished sketch, which people also call renderings. And what I'm showing here is myself, or at least a drawing of myself, drawing on paper, but also, of course, drawing on my iPad as much as possible. And floating up above, I'm a big believer in this idea of the world view, <clears throat> looking out in the world. And in this case, the Japanese term of that is Seikaikan, or in Finnish and Swedish, it's Waldbild, and in German, it's Weltschauen. And it's really the, the basic of looking out and seeing the world and being inspired by that and eventually drawing that or capturing that. If you go back in time, Albrecht Dürer, in one of his engravings, captured this idea of a drawer, in this case, a drafts person, looking through a pane of glass with grids on it onto a subject and taking that and using that as the idea of capturing what he or she is seeing. And in this case, there's a drawing that I've done that's basically myself drawing myself drawing myself inside of a, of a space so it's that layered idea that essentially ties back to Durer's original drawing where you're using a plane or you're using a picture plane or you're using a a kind of a frame to look out and draw what you're seeing so where does that take us next the other aspect i want to talk about is the big idea behind sketching and drawing, this essence behind it, is that it stimulates your brain. I'm a big believer in the fact that as you draw, you're also stimulating various parts of your brain. And I almost think of it as a, a way of etching, etching thoughts or etching ideas or etching sketches in your mind as you draw, much like a photograph, but in my opinion, probably a lot more, say, important and more long lasting than, say, a photograph. Um, if I look back at my history, then I'll, and I'll, <laughs> when I say my history, I've, I've been a while around this universe for quite some time, over 30 years now in the, in the architectural business. Um, I did go to school in London. Uh, this shows a, a sketch I remember putting together for a series of uh, things that I saw in London and then carrying that out. Um, I'm a big believer in what you call the sketchbook. Um, I've got some images that I want to start to show you. This is from 1993 when I was traveling from Japan over to Vladivostok and we're doing a project over there in Vladivostok. And what, what happens with the sketchbook is that if you do have one, and I highly encourage it, but if you do have one, you can drop into it back and forth. And in this case, if you do travel, although I know most of us are not traveling these days, but I'm really looking forward to getting back out there and traveling again because one of my other big things is, besides just drawing every day, is going to places and seeing and looking and drawing. And this is a sketch of the, the old city of Ayutthaya in Thailand. And this shows, taking that same sketch, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of digital man manipulation here, but I take some of my old sketches from 1993 scan those in and then I apply watercolor on top of those sketches and that's exactly what it's showing, showing here. Another multi-dimension to the idea of sketching. Um, again, in this one is, is another idea of sketching and then applying some loose watercolor on top of that sketch. So you've got a simple black and white sketch but you're adding color. Um, one of my favorite <clears throat> countries in the world is uh, Burma. Um, they call it Myanmar but I call it Burma. Um, I'm a big believer in bringing tiny sketchbooks along the road and then drawing those sites. I think each one of these is probably, a, oh gosh, maybe a 10 minute or 10 or 15 minute sketch each. It's a <clears throat> place in Burma called Bagan, which has about uh, 900 temples out in, a, in the landscape. Highly recommended to visit. 
Um, that, this is back in what 2009, a little trip over to Crater Lake and drawing that. In this case, drawing myself, drawing the Crater Lake. Um, <clears throat> more recently, in 2018, this was part of a, an adventure with the IDA, Northern California. Um, I was the president of that uh, group. And one of the things that we did do was take a trip up to Oliver Ranch, which is just north of San Francisco. Um, luckily, I'm pretty sure it did survive without the fires, um, but it is a collection of art pieces. And in this case, going out and sitting down and taking some 15 or 20 minutes each to look and do drawings and sketches of the various art pieces in the landscape. Uh, Matisse. Matisse basically said, to draw is to sharpen an idea. This is a wonder, wonderful phrase here, that draws to sharpen an idea. Drawing is the precision of thought. And it goes again, it goes back to that idea of what's drawing all about and why is it important. And it's basically you're sharpening what you're seeing and sharpening, in this case, some of your ideas, and you're putting those ideas down on paper. Um, a couple more, just some, some freehand sketches. I'll, I'll, I've got so many sketches, and I and since I do sketch almost every day, it's a, it's a treasure house of, of things that I've drawn over time. Um, back, oh gosh, this was about 10 years ago. I was lucky enough to be able to um, take a trip down to Isla Guadalupe off the island, off the coast of Mexico. And this is an island that is, um, it's a preservation island for the uh, country of Mexico. But this is the place where you can see great white sharks. And you can um, get in these cages and go down in the water and, and see them firsthand. Um, it's a little scary, but this is a, a map that I drew of the island after we circulated around the island and got a good idea of what it's all about. Um, another really quick thing to show is this idea. It doesn't matter if you have a sketchbook. It doesn't matter what type of paper you have. You've also got this ability to take some of the, say, the stationery from the hotel where you're staying. In this case, taking that stationery, bringing it to the museum in Washington, D.C., and then sketching a, a sculpture by Rachel Whitehead. Um, now I've begun a, a new website. Um, it was mentioned at the beginning that I have a, a blog, but I've also got a new website. It's called Drawing in the World. And these were some initial sketches of what is that all about? And it basically is, in many cases, drawing on the world, but also drawing the world as you see it and as you travel through it. Um, on the other hand, <laughs> we're all about the coronavirus right now. We're all about the pandemic. And, and um because of that, it's also been a series of drawings that have been trying to either acknowledge the virus or, in this case, what are the things that we're all doing now to, um, say, respond to the virus? And, and and I know many of us are actually taking the, um, the opportunity to go out and take walks and take hikes and see parts of nature. Um, it's actually one of the, in my opinion, probably one of the benefits of, of what's been happening to us in the last six or seven months is it's allowed us to take more time to connect with our family, to connect with our friends, and in this case, connecting to the family and then trying to capture that in a, a sketch here, uh, say the Easter Sunday call and, and getting, getting a, a message down and, and tying into everyone. At the same time, however, I know a lot of us um, have felt very alone, um, this idea of uh, working from home. Yes, it does work, and yes, we've learned how to be remote, but there's still a big missing of, of our, you know, we, as we all know, the connection and seeing people and enjoying face-to-face -face meetings. Um, part of part of what is also happening from COVID is that it's we're learning what are we going to do to get back? What are we going to do to get back to work? And these were some early sketches about this idea of possibly an entry portal that would, in many ways, combine with your digital device and wearable, it would give you an idea of how safe the space was and the air quality and the temperature reading, et cetera. Um, before I forget, and I and what, what's the general nature of the audience today? Can you say? Um, so mostly um, the architecture, architecture design community. Um, okay, we all right. Some of our dealer partners as well, yeah. Okay, gotcha, all right. So I'll, I'll say briefly here is I wanted to just show what happens to me every, well, almost every June when we go to Neocon. Um, um, it's, it's a wonderful place because what I love about going to Neocon is that you have, I have the opportunity to 
draw this wonderful city of Chicago. And in this case, um, it doesn't really, for me, Chicago is one of those places that's an architect's dream house. Whether you're on a boat or whether you're on the street or whether in this case, you're sitting in a hotel lobby looking up, it's a fabulous place to, to draw and sketch. And even when you do go to the merchandise mart, um, you can find a corner sometimes in the corner of the building and sit down and do some drawings looking back out. Um, this is a this is actually a drawing looking back from the merchandise mart, and I'm pretty sure the building on the lower left is the Kimball building, um, where actually it was the original Kimball piano building, and I know Kimball still has a showroom there. I don't know if National has one there, but um, that that's do, do you know does National have a showroom in that we building? Do. Mm -hmm. You do yes. okay. Well, we're next that's to the one. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Um, so and again, some other sketches in this case drawings of, of what chicago is all about and i would say that what's most exciting for me about neocon is getting also past the crowds i don't get me wrong i love the crowds but getting past the crowds and then finding that time to sketch and draw some of the new things that are on display and in many cases here this is this is i think this was back in 2018 where there was a couple of four there was four items that caught my eye um, from different showrooms and i sketched those and drew those several times um, and captured those so especially four things i saw at neocon and you know if i do get back to neocon again i'll probably continue that uh, again this is a uh, so those of you who know me um i do have a, a a odd sense of humor sometimes so sometimes i do a lot of cartoons and basically this cartoon is so how was Neocon? And basically it's a giant thought bubble of all the stuff that you saw at Neocon and it's all coagulating above in your brain there. So it's it's hard to answer that question sometimes when people ask you, how was Neocon? Um, not only the show itself, of course, but the, the evening events as well. Um, I'm a big believer in using sketching and drawing to, to draw scenarios or draw furniture or draw fixtures and pieces of design and use that also as part of getting your ideas out on paper. Um, sometimes extremely rough like this uh, beach canopy set that's being shown here. And sometimes um, what I call sketch overlays that are done on top of drawings and then looking at various scenarios and white, you know, in this case, the accessories and acoustic panels, et cetera. Again, done prior to COVID, this would probably change quite a bit. But it's that idea of using drawing to analyze and put pieces together and, and study how, in this case, a set of furniture objects or furniture items could be assembled together in a, uh, a lobby of a building. And in this case, another the similar idea of how that could be generated. And this, I want to point this out. Um, those of you who do draw on a sketch pad, and I, I usually call that analog or analog technique, is what I also like to do, or at least I suggest highly doing, is drawing on sketch pads and scanning that and then drawing on it again on your iPad uh, using a various software um, apps. Um, on my website, if you do get a chance later on, I've got a, a list of different types of apps that I recommend for drawing on the iPad. Um, and again, you know, sometimes I just draw. Um, and this is, an, uh, this, I just draw because I've got an idea and this is one of those, it's almost a, a double decker seating unit that um, uh, basically sitting back and relax and taking off your shoes and wondering about life. Um, I also, I love the fact that we are as designers always asked about colors and in this case, documenting colors of the year 2019, you can see the wide variety from PPG, Sherwin-Williams, Benjamin Moore and Pantone. Um, and, and, and each year, um, there's, there's different colors. I, you go back to 2018, and what I captured here was the, the four colors for 2018 from the four, uh, say, paint manufacturers or representatives. I have not drawn, and maybe someone has, but I have no idea what the color of 2020 is, but it's probably going to be pretty dark. Um, <laughs> so I, have, I haven't touched that subject yet. But uh, hopefully 2021 will be a lot more optimistic in terms of colors. Um, I'll, I'll skip through a couple more of these, but this is basically just to show you that the, the variety of ways of drawing and the varieties of techniques are, are quite numerous. Um, some of you, if you do remember, there's a show called Maxwell Smart or Get Smart. 
And from that, um, there was a what were called a cone of silence where Max would meet with his uh, his boss. And in this case, a cone of silence would drop over them and that would be a quiet time. But this is one of those things that uh, came back to me when I started well, thinking, obviously, we have to not only be six feet apart, but we're probably going to also have to um, separate ourselves with a more of a higher degree of separation. Um, other types of sketches here. This is, again, it's a mixture of a drawing on tracing paper and then scanned and then color added in the uh, scan on the iPad. And this is another one of those drawing in freehand, scanning that in and then adding color afterwards on the iPad. Um, Picasso, another wonderful artist, um, he also drew I think he probably drew in the daytime and in the nighttime. I, I don't think he never, I, he never stopped drawing. But his phrase, I love this, I draw like other people bite their nails. Um, it brings some images to your mind. If you know people who bite their nails all the time, I mean, that's what he was referring to, that he was could never leave the drawing alone. He was always drawing all the time. And there was no, never any time to take a break from that. Um, so what that means is for me is I like to draw everything and in this case it's drawing of, or of, of in this case a bank the bank of the future of what that could potentially look like um sketches for a project over in harbin china northern china for a, a bank lobby um i was unfortunately but i, I was uh, i was working at gensler for 25 years i, I was uh, i left gensler in july of this year so i'm no longer at gensler but while I was there, I was uh, integral to moving our Gensler office from San Ramon over to the Oakland location. And one of the things that started to happen there was to really take a good look at Oakland and look at what are all the unique features of Oakland and what might happen as the city goes into the future. And I think this was drawn 2014 in this idea of, of where the city may go in the future. And that's that's another wonderful thing about drawing is that it allows this time for speculation and, and thinking about what are some of those things that could be happening to a city. Um, this is also a good diagram of what drawing can do. In this case, it's a really, really rough process diagram that was developed while we were sitting with the client and talking about what the project would be all about and what are all the different types of variations that would be added to that. Um, Hayworth, in this case, I, I sometimes I'll go to different showrooms, showroom events. This was at the Hayworth showroom in San Francisco, um, where they had four. Oh, actually, this was supported by Metropolis mag magazine. Avinash from Metropolis had some three other, uh, say, designers from the area. And what I like to do is to, to of course, be there at the event, but then try to capture that event in a series of notes. And in this case, this is called visual note taking. And it's an overlay on top of the conversations. And what I do by that is I capture some of the some of the key things that were mentioned as part of the discussion that was going on. Fascinating. Um, the more I do this, the more I realize that I remember the event a lot better. I remember what a lot of people were talking about. It's almost like um, you know that old way of taking notes, freehand taking notes, and what a lot of people do now is taking notes on a computer or taking notes on a laptop. This is a this is another method, but in this case, it's taking notes, but it's also making them into visuals. So it's a mixture of graphic and visuals into, into one um, scenario and one way of remembering things. A um, couple, couple other, say, digital drawings. This is a, a, a visual reference to the Internet of Things, which is carrying us through everywhere. Some really fresh and rough sketches on top of tracing paper, uh, furniture studies for a project in downtown Oakland, uh, different types of uh, units that go into the break room. This is a set of also really quick early design sketch drawings for a bank of the future in China and how that bank of the future may be an extension of the ground floor going up to a mezzanine level and then extending that level up to the second floor level where you would be going into the future and talking about investing in consulting. And these types of drawings are interesting because these drawings, I have found the clients, they get them. 
They're rough, they're diagrammatic, but it's a very easy, wonderful way to explain to a client, in this case, that journey through a space from the entrance place up the stairway to the mezzanine level, and then finally up to the future of the, the top floor level. In this case, drawing is an essential, but also very, very quick way to show what your main ideas are on a project. Um, those of you who are shy about drawing, um, it doesn't matter if you can't draw. And I, what I mean by that is that everyone can draw. It's just a case of getting over your fear of drawing and doing it. And in this case, I want to show you what, excuse me, what I do at home quite a bit. I have a, I have a 10 year old daughter and, and when we do um, get together, we'll do uh, family drawing time. Um, in this case, we were drawing, this is his set of drawings that we did for a, a, a house. It was an imaginary house where we did a drawing of the section of the house, looking through the house and then drawing all the parts and pieces inside of the house. And even in this case, um, explaining to my daughter what a section drawing was all about. It was, all, it was a learning experience as, as well. And then filling that all in, she's right there, she's drawing her favorite, which is the the uh, hammock hanging from the ceiling, the, the, her ideal place to, to uh, take a, a sleep or a nap. Um, and then the, the finished construction afterwards that we, we I, actually, I don't even know where this ended up, but this was, this was such a fun two hour um, drawing that we did. So Michael Graves, I, I had mentioned right at the beginning, he's the one that came up with those three different drawing types. He's um, very well known for also having what I call a really good hand or drawing hand or sketching hand. And his point was that drawing by hand stimulates the imagination. And it really allows us to speculate again about ideas. I keep bringing up that's this same idea. The same statement is it's all about ideas and how to capture those ideas. And in this case, he says, this is a good sign that we are alive. Um, rather than just being, say, creatures that are just receiving sig signals and information all the time, what he's talking about is giving back and looking out and drawing and capturing that information in this case. So it's not just you know, being a sentient being, it's being an active being and getting involved and getting your hand and your eye and your brain involved. Um, this is one of the things that I love doing, which is uh, ideation on whiteboards. Um, in this case, this was ideating uh, some ideas for a, a large scale atrium uh, transformation and looking at it from, a, in this case, a section perspective view and a section view and then a lot of the characters or ideas of integrating well-being and landscape and experience inside of that type of place. Freehand sketches. Um, I don't hold back in terms of where or what I draw on. It doesn't matter what type of notebook or, or it, it really doesn't matter. As, as long as it's some type of surface that is receptive and you can draw on top of it. This is, oh, this is from Lutron. I think this is a, a seminar attended at Lutron. And even this case was taking a little break from the lecture and then doing a little sketch on a project that I was working on at that time and, and seeing what that looked like in, in perspective. But it's it's that idea of not holding back and, and just taking that little break and doing those sketches. This was uh, a visualization session that we had um, at Genser for some of the principals. And this is, we were talking about the, the future. Um, every, we all, we're always talking about the future. We're, that, I mean, that's essentially what design is all about is we'll talk about the present and sometimes we'll refer back to the past, but essentially design is all about the future. And in this case, it was keeping everything on uh, post-it notes and then capturing all that data and information and, and cool stuff on post-it notes and eventually putting that all back together into a large scale uh, sketch format but you can see even for here, what I like to do on that case is, yes, the, the words are important, but I'm also a big believer in the, uh, the phrases and the, and the sketches themselves to also have that double punch or that visual appearance that, that you know, makes that note even more memorable. Um, I do teach over at uh, UC Berkeley. Um, it's an extension program. Um, it's, it's not happening right now, but... Uh, I wanted to show you that this may bring some memories back in the past for some of you. This is the old uh, chalkboard. Um, I'm also a, a big believer in, in drawing or sketching on chalkboards. And in this case, this was uh, some exercises of, of drawing different types of furniture pieces and cabinet pieces. And in this case, refrigerators and 
showing the similarities of dimensional qualities of refrigerators to storage cabinets and, and regular cabinets. And just trying to capture that in a, in a simple uh, two-point perspective and then showing how that could be drawn. And I, when I am teaching, I'm using this, the chalkboard as, as literally a, a receiving device. And I, I try to as much as possible to get it to a certain point. And I encourage my students at that time, I encourage them to come up and, and draw on the chalkboard. It's very, very rare that a student is brave enough to come up and draw on the chalkboard. But um, every now and then I get, I get some brave souls that come up and, and do some wonderful drawings as well. Um, and it's not all about furniture and spaces either. For someone like myself, I, I also, um, I love drawing fruit and food and vegetables. And, and I like to do drawings that are, that are looking at the idea of, of, of the nutrition and nature. And in this case, this was an assignment for a project down in, our, uh, in the Gensler LA office for a, a restaurant. And these were some studies that were done of looking at what, was, what are some of the ways that we could take some simple um, vegetable drawings and food drawings and incorporate those as some large scale graphics that could be applied onto the wall? And these are showing some variations on what those studies could be. Um, what's interesting about this is it's all relying on the simplicity of the line in this case, um, just the outline of the line, the contour, and then filling in some of the details. Um, I took it a step further and then made it into uh, those of you who've made up model airplanes and model cars. This is the this is your model vegetable garden where you can break off all the pieces and put together your own, say your own vegetable garden, or in this case. It's almost like a salad bar mix, a different type of salad bar. Um, I, kind of a couple of other variations here. I am helping a, uh, a class out of our Tulane University. I went to Tulane University in New Orleans, and we're, we're getting back together again, the graduates from back in the 80s. We're, uh, we're getting back together, and we're assembling. Each person is assigned to come up with a, uh, a recipe. In this case, uh, my recipe because I grew up in New Orleans is the gumbo and the architect of choice in that case is Gaudi. So I'm, I'm mixing gumbo with Gaudi to come up with a recipe for um, Gaudi gumbo. Um, and so these are some of the preparatory drawings for that. What we're doing is we're putting all this together. And we're making a cookbook, uh, a recipe of uh, from each of the, the students from that, from our class. Um, cats. Cats have a singular interest in my life. And what I love about this is that it's also talking about all of us, including animals, uh, we're inside and we're looking out most of the time now. We're not venturing out like we did before, but we're very cautious and we're getting ready to look out there. One of the things that I also spend some time on is um, I have a passion for classic automobiles. And this is a, uh, this is a, a 1969 Datsun Dotson was uh, uh, brave enough uh, to put out a sports convertible back in 1967, 68, 69, 70. And um, I was lucky to be able to find one up on the border of Canada and US last year, purchased that and brought it back. And if I'm not driving it, I'm drawing it. And if I'm not drawing it, I'm, I'm fixing it because it needs a lot of work. Um, one other thing, to sh what's wonderful about drawing and sketching is um, capturing some of those images and, and printing those on t-shirts. Um, this shows um, a test that I was doing for, the upper drawing is a, a, a model of a, of a future building. It's all composed of different types of um, solar screens and PV panels on the outside in a more of a random format so that it's not a, necessarily a very unified building. It's a building that's composed of screens that offer the the uh, occupants inside the opportunity to grow their own gardens just outside in their own balconies and then this drawing down below is a uh, a favorite place i go it's up uh, lake tahoe um it's one of those uh, wonderful sites on um, the lake up in tahoe so what we're going to look at today um and i hope i'm not talking too fast or going to I know I'm just kind of burning through here, and I knew this was called Blurred Lines. And am I yeah, so we've got some comments. People were saying beautiful work. Thank you so much for sharing the fascinating process. So I think that was very, very helpful, what you showed. Okay, so far so good. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got people really love the note taking concepts. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> good. Um, I did too. I really like that. All right. All right. Well, that's good. So I'm, I'm glad I, I wanted to, I have a note here to remind myself to do a couple of things here, but um, good. So we're, we're on schedule. Um, mm -hmm. So basically what we're going to talk about now is um, I, this sketch I did back in 2015 and I actually, I refreshed it for today, but it's basically the idea is what are you working on today? Um, all of us now we're, we're most of us, maybe not all of us. I think some of them, maybe there's some brave souls that are going back to work, but, um, we're all looking at, I want to, I thought I was, hold on just a minute. I want to, I'm not getting the response to go forward on this now. Dun -dun. It looks like. Do you have the image on your screen right now? I do have. Um, I okay. see um, what what you're working on. The slide. Oh, 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 sorry. Okay, it's, it's back now. It's back now. Okay, so back in, I think it was the first week or the second week of work from home and work from SIP and WFM, WFH, those, those acronyms. Um, the, the setup that I had at that time was um, I had the iPad. <laughs> And I had a whiteboard behind me, and I still have that exact scenario now, although I've graduated from the simple iPad with the stylus and the whiteboard. I've, I've graduated and I've, I've moved more in this direction here, which is um, a scenario that shows uh, the work from home setup that seems to be working the best for me right now is the, the centerpiece is the iMac. Um, I've got the iPad off to the left as a digital device. I've got, sometimes I've got a laptop computer that's open on the right side, but I also always have a white, uh, large white tablet behind me at all times because I ended up, I end up doing a lot of drawings to show some of the ideas that I'm working on. But this right here, I'm showing this. Um, some of you may have seen this. I, I publish this as an update every, every other week either on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, but it's basically uh, capturing what's happening while working from home and what, what are the new issues. And in this case, this was uh, uh, October 16th and really talking about the brave new work world and still thinking about creative collisions. That's one of the things that we're missing and appraising the present and is remote, really remote um, and changing our thinking about work. Um, but each time I do this drawing, it's updated. I've got another device. I've got something new. On the lower left here, uh, my newest thing now is working with watercolor and gouache. Gouache, um, if you've heard it, maybe you've heard of it, but gouache is basically more of an opaque type of watercolor. And I'm having some fascinating fun with uh, a new media um, medium. I, I've never used it before, so it's, uh, I'm teaching myself how that works. The thing that I want to look at today with you as, as a sketching idea is it's basically we're going to, I'm trying to try to unblock if you've got blocks. And these, this is a, a pun on that because these are writer blocks or writer's blocks. Um, and I want to try to unblock some of those blocks that you may be having. And what we're going to try to do today is we're going to do what I'm calling a creative drawing. Um, it's, a, it's an exercise and it's, it's essentially, oops, it's essentially, what is your view of the world from your current seated position? Um, basically, in that case, what do you what do you see inside? And in this case, what I'm showing here is I'm showing a a chair, of course, and I'm showing a, a, a work table of some sort and some devices on that work table. Some of you may have a, a window in front of you that that allows you to see outside. Um, apologies on the, the two green stickers there. That's uh, I, I study uh, Japanese Chinese kanji, so that that basically those are the kanji that means view, looking outside. Um, that helps me. Re it's just my way of remembering kanji, and so I try to mix English and Japanese in this case. But the exercise that I want to try to do today is this idea of where the position where you are right now and looking out, looking in front of you and capturing, in this case, capturing what you see and what's, what's, on, what's on the um, 
screen and also what's around your screen. So I think what I'd like to do is I, I'm going to go off, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to see if we can go back to me. on. Can you show me now? Do I need to unshare or... We see you now. Oh, you do? You may be frozen on my end. Okay. Um, it looks like your I, feed is <clears throat> maybe you having see? a little bit of a lag. You have a little bit of lag there? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to do is I want to get the, the camera back on me. I, and it says, okay, oh, from Evelyn. That somebody says the screen. I cannot see anything but black. black. So maybe I need to do something. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe turn your camera off and then turn it back on. Sometimes that helps. Okay. Let's see if that works. Oh, I think that's going to work. Okay. That, you're back on my end. All right. Good. Okay. Let's see. A big, big picture of me there. All right. Okay. So let's, let's look at this, this a little bit more. So, as I was saying before, the idea is that this is you, and meaning that everyone out there who's listening out there, that this is you right now sitting in this chair, possibly typing on a keyboard, possibly looking at the screen in front of you, possibly if there's a window in front of you here, looking out on that window, and possibly maybe there's something outside here that you see as well. And there is, in this case, this division between inside and outside, and that's what I'm showing in this sketch here. But uh, what I'd like to try to do is, let me let me just pull this up. This is the active part of the of the show today. Okay, this is action. What I'd like to try to do is have those of you who are ready and willing and able. Um, what I'd like you to try to do is do a drawing. Of what do you see? What do you see in front of you? And at the same time, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'll probably talk while I'm doing it, but it doesn't mean that you have to stop what you're doing. But basically, what I'd like you to do is to draw and see what see what's in front of you and try to capture that. And if whether you're using a pen or a pencil or you've got a small tablet, it doesn't matter. I'm it, this right now. This is a big piece of paper. It could be just a tiny little tiny little sketchbook. But what I want you to do is to take the time, slow down, and draw what's in front of you. And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I may talk a little bit, but I don't want to disturb you. So let's take a look and let, let's draw what's in front of us. I'm going to start with the. For me, the, the monitor. It's amazing how all of us were, were, were relying so much on these, uh, not necessarily always a monitor, but we're, this is our whole life now is, is um, the screen, the screen action and the various means by which we look and communicate with others. Um, I'll Drawing in here, there got the keyboard. My keyboard is going to be really quick. Unless you like drawing individual keys, I usually find a little nice little grid on top of a rectangular shape. Usually serves pretty well as a keyboard. I've got my monitor in there. I've got a pad below. I'm going to sketch out. I've got a back line here. I'm going to see if I can capture the front edge of the work surface that I'm working on top of. I've got a, remember, they used to use this term mouse pad. I don't know if they ever use that term anymore, but um, they used to use this buy mouse pads. I don't think anyone necessarily buys mouse pads anymore, but anyway, mouse is sitting over here somewhere. If it's wireless, it's wireless, which is great. If it's not wireless, it's gonna have a wire coming back and connecting back to the main computer. Off to the right, or off to the left, excuse me, off to my left here. This is where I usually 
do most of my work is on the iPad itself. I'm a big believer in the digital iPad. In this case, it's it's also one of those devices that can unfold and it's another rectangular surface that you're looking at throughout the day. And another one of those little rectangular pieces here. I'm lucky that I've got a partial view looking outside and I've got, a, of course, a view looking inside. So part of my view is looking out at a, in this case, a window frame. So that's the wall behind. So as you can see in here, I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to be really exact and draw all straight lines. That, that's, not, that's not really the essence of what I'm trying to show here. What I'm trying to show is just using your finger, sorry, using your pen or pencil and looking at the object and tracing over it or tracing over it the image. Um, I think most of us probably have a beverage of some sort sitting somewhere. In this case, I have some iced tea that is, looks like the ice is still all melted. Um, go over here, nice little coaster on top. Background, a lot of, I've got a stylus here that I, actually I've got a couple of styluses. I've got my active stylus and I've got another stylus sometimes over here off to the side. Um, the iPad, screen itself i use a real quick sketch on that i mean a quick hatch on there to fill that in and then in the background um i've got a whole collection of framed whether they're photographs or drawings that are on the wall beyond on the other side so i don't even notice them anymore um i you know when I know when you put these pieces up on your wall, you're putting all these frame pieces up there, you you really know and you arrange things. I, I don't think I've moved these in three or four years now. But the wall is full of drawings, whether they're drawings by myself, or drawings by my daughter, uh, landscapes, uh, pictures of, of people. Um, but that's the all the, the fill of the of the information in the background back there and then i'm lucky in this case to also have a view outside and where i live is a, is a place called walnut creek it's in the east bay of san francisco bay area and there's a wonderful triplets of uh, some maple trees on the outside and so they're just getting ready to change their leaf color from green to yellow, and then they turn this beautiful orange and red, usually right before Halloween. So it's it's coming very soon. So that's the view looking outside. And then beyond that, there is a, a mountain that has been hiding quite a bit for the last three weeks because of all the smoke, but it's back now. It's called Mount Diablo, Devil's Mountain. That's out and beyond there. So in this case, my view is essentially inside and then the view, the window frame looking outside to the landscape beyond. And what I also like to think of here is where we are now is that we're also looking at our interior landscape, and we're looking at what we call, what I call the virtual landscape. It's the digital landscape that we're all connected to when we're connected to each other right now is that same idea of the, of the digital landscape that's linking all of us together. And in this case, it's linking me to, a little mustache right here. It's linking me to everyone there and making that connection. So that's that's what I see. <laughs> that's my view, and that's that's uh, yeah, what was that? What was about ten minutes, maybe ten minutes or so? So essentially, looking and seeing and trying to capture in this case. Oh, you know what? I forgot one important item. One very important item. This is the item. This is the one that everyone is always looking for all the time. 
<laughs> it's that one. It's that the iPhone. Phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's that iPhone that mm. we're all linked to that sometimes is misplaced. But anyway, right? Yeah, for sure. Do you mind if I go back to the sh showing you just a couple more um, drawings? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let me just go back to. Can I share your screen? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Let me. You know what? I'm. I'm just going to show you just a couple more things. This. This is an animation, just to show. I don't know if it's going to work, but this shows the process of drawing on top of another drawing. So drawing on top of a trace drawing and then drawing that again with the, the series of uh, different types of furniture layouts. And this one is also quick, quick sketches of collaboration spaces. And again, I'm a big believer in doing quick gesture drawings. Um, I don't think necessarily you have to take a lot of time necessarily to capture ideas. And so this shows a, a different types of studies for what collaboration spaces could be. This one is, I love this one because this is um, at the Apple store. There's some drawing classes. And one of the classes that I've been fortunate to teach once was this one that's uh, designing a treehouse. And so at the back of the Apple store is typically there's a large screen. And so this was um, teaching kids the, um, how was it through Norman Foster in this case, this is test work, teaching kids about drawing their own tree house. And in this case, it captures the trees and you put the kids in there and then you zoom out a little bit. And then in this case, everyone in the class has a chance to draw their own tree house. And this is what I ended up drawing for, uh, from, from, from my point of view, the um, Romeo and Juliet um, tree house. And one more. Oh, no, that was going to be too involved. Um, let me hey, just Jack, go. Can I ask you a question real quick? We've got a question. Yes. Um, any program recommendations to sketch on the iPad? Somebody's asking. Um, yes. So I like use Notability, but curious if there's something better. I um, let me. Well, the th one thing I want to do is I, I hopefully on here is showing the links to the to uh, my uh, blogs and my websites. Perfect. I'm going to send this over to you and you can distribute this, but also mm -hmm. I will, I think it's on drawing the world blocks blog spot. I've got a list of apps that I recommend for the iPad as well. So that will be the best way that Perfect. we can get that information out. Okay. So, um, that was fun. All right. I hope, I hope everyone had a good time. I, that I know was fun. That was good. fun. Um, I'm going to, can you stop see. share? Yeah. Can you stop share? Yep. There you go. I'll jump back on here. Yeah. So that was fun. Sorry for everyone for the technical difficulties. No, no, no. Like Michelle said, we will share our sketches, okay. but I do want to, again, Doug, thank you. Yes. I mean, that was, it brought back memories. Um, you talking about drawing with your daughter, some of the best memories and earliest memories I have are waking up early, really early in the morning. <laughs> And like grabbing our coloring books and drawing when, oh, you know, yeah. when I was small. So, um, and I know during the pandemic, I did pick up my sketch pad and good. I think I drew everything that was living in my house, including <laughs> plants, dogs, my husband. So um, great. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to continue to do this. Oh, good. I'm, I'm going to share my screen okay. here. I can I have to make myself a host again. Yeah. Can you make just me a host? Somebody just sent a note saying they would love to do this all day long. I know. Harbor Cabin. So, okay. uh, <laughs> Christine, if you're if somebody was listening, can you make me a host? <laughs> so I can share my screen. I want to show everyone how oh. to tag um, and where to share. If you oh. sketch something today, um, we want to see it. Like we want to be able to share it. Um, Should, do I need to do anything for you to? Can you make? Oh, dude, let's it's, see. Uh, it's not. I just stopped my video. If that, I don't know if that worked. No. Yeah, I think Zoom is kind of having some issues here. 
Yeah, unfortunately, it's not letting me make you a host again. That's okay. Well, that's okay. Huh. So, everyone, if you follow us or tag us next week, same time, okay. um, coming out of the Dallas area, it'll be a charcuterie 101 workshop. So, if you're wow. interested in that. Wow. But, Doug? Yes. Thank you. You're I mean, welcome. This was great. I think we've got some really, everyone enjoyed it. Um, we will have a recording. I know a lot of people are interested in going back and looking at um, at your um, your sketches. So we'll make okay. sure to share your links for your work as well. Great. Okay. So thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Sign off. All right.